Hello, today we get to continue reading in the Gospels, and we'll start with Matthew 8, 18. Now when Jesus saw a crowd around him, he gave orders to go over to the other side. Matthew 8, 23. And when he got into the boat, his disciples followed him, and behold, there arose a great storm on the sea, so that the boat was being swamped by the waves, but he was asleep. <laughs> and they went and woke him, saying, Save us, Lord, we're perishing. And he said to them, Why are you afraid, O you of little faith? Then he rose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. And the men marveled, saying, What sort of man is this, that even winds and sea obey him? Mark chapter 4, verse 35. On that day, when evening had come, he, came, he said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd, they took him with him in the boat, just as he was. And other boats were with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves were breaking into the boat, so that the boat was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. They woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we're perishing? And he awoke and rebuked the wind and the sea. Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. He said to them, Why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great fear and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? One, uh, um, Luke chapter 8, verse 22. One day he got into a boat with his disciples and he said to them, Let us go across to the other side of the lake. So they set out. And as they sailed, he fell asleep, and a windstorm came down on the lake, and they were filled with water, and they were filling with water and were in danger. And they went and woke him, saying, Master, Master, we're perishing. And he awoke and rebuked the wind and the raging waves, and they ceased, and there was a calm. He said to them, Where is your faith? And they were afraid, and they marveled, saying to one another, who then is this that he commands even winds and water, and they obey him? Matthew chapter 8, verse 28. And when he came to the other side, to the country of the Gadarenes, two demon-possessed men met him, coming out of the tombs so fierce that no one could pass that way. And behold, they cried out, What have you to do with us, O Son of God? Have you come here to torment us before our time? Now a herd of many pigs were feeding at some distance from them, and the demons begged him, saying, If you cast us out, send us away into the herd of pigs. And he said to them, Go. <laughs> so they came out and went into the pigs, and behold, the whole herd rushed down the steep bank into the sea and drowned in the water. <laughs> The herdsmen fled, and going into the city, they told everything, especially what had happened to the demon-possessed men. And behold, all the city came out to meet Jesus. And when they saw him, they begged him to leave their region. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Mark chapter 5. They came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gadarenes, and when Jesus had stepped out of the boat, immediately there met him out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit. He lived among the tombs. No one could bind him any more, not even with a chain. For he had often been bound with shackles and chains, but he wrenched the chains apart and he broke the shackles in pieces. No one had the strength to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and on the mountains, he was always crying out and cutting himself with stones. And when he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and fell down before him. And crying out with a loud voice, he said, What have you to do with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? I adjure you by God, do not torment me. For he was saying to him, Come out of the man, you unclean spirit. And Jesus asked him, What is your name? He replied, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he begged him earnestly not to send them out of the country. Now a great herd of pigs was feeding there on the hillside, and they begged him, saying, Send us into the pigs, let us enter them. So he gave them permission, and the unclean spirits came out and entered the pigs, 
and the herd, numbering about 2,000, rushed down the steep bank into the sea and drowned in the sea. The herdsmen fled and told it in the city and in the country, and people came to see what it was that had happened. And they came to Jesus and saw the demon-possessed man, the one who had had the legion sitting there, clothed and in his right mind. <laughs> And they were afraid. <laughs> it's funny. When he was crazy, they weren't afraid. When he was breaking chains <laughs> and threatening people, they weren't afraid. But now that he's in his right mind, now they're afraid. <laughs> anyway, and those who had seen it described to them what had happened to the demon-possessed man and to the pigs. And they began to beg Jesus to depart from their region as he was getting into the boat, the man who had been possessed with demons begged him that he might be with him. And he did not permit him, but said to him, Go home to your friends and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. And he went away and began to proclaim in the Decapolis how much Jesus had done for him. And everyone marveled. Wow. He had one experience with Jesus. <laughs> and change the whole city, which is so cool. All right, Luke eight twenty six. Then they sailed to the country of the uh, Gerasenes, which is opposite Galilee. When Jesus had stepped on the land, there met him a man from the city who had demons. For a long time he had worn no clothes, and he had not lived in a house but among the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him and said with a loud voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? I beg you, do not torment me. For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For many a time it had seized him. He was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles, but he would break the bonds and be driven by the demons into the desert. Jesus then asked him, What is your name? And he said, Legion for many demons had entered him and they begged him not to command them to depart into the abyss. Now a large herd of pigs was feeding there on the hillside and they begged him to let them enter these. So he gave them permission. Then the demons came out of the man and entered the pigs and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and drowned. When the herdsmen saw what had happened, they fled and told it in the city and in the country. Then people went out to see what had happened. And they came to Jesus and found the man from whom the demons had gone, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. And those who had seen it told them how the demon-possessed man had been healed. Then all the people of the surrounding country of the Gerasenes asked him to depart from them for they were seized with great fear. So he got into the boat and returned. The man from whom the demons had gone begged that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away saying, return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. And he went away proclaiming throughout the whole city how much Jesus had done for him. Matthew chapter nine, verse 18. While he was saying these things to them, behold, a ruler came in and knelt before him, saying, My daughter has just died, but come and lay your hand on her, and she will live. Wow, what faith. And Jesus rose and followed him with his disciples. And behold, a woman who had suffered from a discharge of blood for 12 years came up behind him and touched the fringe of his garment. For she said to herself, if I only touch his garment, I will be made well. Jesus turned and seeing her, he said, take heart, daughter, your faith has made you well. And instantly the woman was made well. And when Jesus came to the ruler's house and saw the flute players and the crowd making a commotion, he said, go away for the girl is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. But when the crowd had been put outside, he went in and took her by the hand and the girl arose. And the report of this went through all that district. <laughs> oh my gosh, there's so much in that one paragraph. Wow, Mark 5, verse 21. And when Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him, and he was beside the sea. Then came one of the rulers of the synagogue, 
Jairus by name, and seeing him, he fell at his feet and implored him earnestly, saying, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. And he went with him. And a great crowd followed him and thronged about him. And there was a woman who had a discharge of blood for 12 years and who had suffered much under many physicians and had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard the reports about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if I touch even his garment, I will be made well. Immediately, the flow of blood dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. And Jesus, perceiving in himself that power had gone out from him, immediately turned about in the crowd and said, who touched my garment? His disciples said to him, you see the crowd pressing around you and yet you say, who touched me? And he looked around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what happened to her, came in fear and trembling and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, there came from the ruler's house some, someone who said, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the ruler of the synagogue, do not fear, only believe. And he allowed no one to follow him except Peter and James and John, the brother of James. They came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and Jesus saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. And when he had entered, he said to them, why are you making a commotion and weeping? The child is not dead, but sleeping. They laughed at him, but he put them outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. Taking her by the hand, he said to her, Talitha Kumi, which means little girl, I say to you, arise. And immediately the girl got up and began walking for she was 12 years of age and they were immediately overcome with amazement and he strictly charged them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. <laughs> and he strictly charged them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. How can no one know this? I mean, you have to obey Jesus but you also have people mourning and playing flutes outside for the death of the daughter who is now going to come outside and greet everybody. <laughs> I wonder what Jesus meant when he said, let no one know this. There has to be more to that. There has to be more to that. Anyway, Luke eight forty. Now, when Jesus returned, the crowd welcomed him for they were all waiting for him. And there came a man named Jairus, who was a ruler of the synagogue. And falling at Jesus' feet, he implored him to come to his house, for he had an only daughter about 12 years of age, and she was dying. As Jesus went, the people pressed around him, and there was a woman who had a discharge of blood for 12 years. And though she had spent all her living on physicians, she could not be healed by anyone. She came up behind him and touched the fringe of his garment and immediately her discharge of blood ceased. And Jesus said, who was it that touched me? When all denied it, Peter said, master, the crowds surround you and are pressing in on you. But Jesus said, someone touched me for I perceive that power has gone out from me. And when the woman saw that she was not hidden, she came trembling and falling down before him declared, in the presence of all the people, why she had touched him and how she had been immediately healed. And he said to her daughter, your faith has made you well, go in peace. While he was still speaking, someone from the ruler's house came and said, your daughter is dead, do not trouble the teacher anymore. But Jesus on hearing this answered him, do not fear, only believe and she will be well. And when he came to the house, he allowed no one to enter with him except Peter and John and James and the father and mother of the child. 
and all were weeping and mourning for her. But he said, Do not weep, for she is not dead but sleeping. And they laughed at him, knowing that she was dead. But taking her by the hand, he called, saying, Child, arise. And her spirit returned, and she got up at once, and he directed that something should be given to her to eat. And her parents were amazed, but he charged them to tell no one what had happened. Matthew chapter 13, verse 54. And coming to his hometown, he taught them in their synagogue so that they were astonished and said, Where did this man get his wisdom and these mighty works? Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary? And are not his brothers James and Joseph and Simon and Judas? And are not all his sisters with us? Where then did this man get all these things? And they took offense at him. But Jesus said to him, A prophet is not without honor except in his hometown and in his own household. And he did not do many mighty works there because of their unbelief. It's interesting that their belief, the people's belief, determined the works that Jesus did. That's an interesting, interesting thought. Mark chapter 6. He went away from there and came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. And on the Sabbath he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astonished, saying, Where did this man get these things? What is the wisdom given to him? How are such mighty works done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his hometown and among his relatives and in his own household. And he could do no mighty works there except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. And, when he, and he went about among the villages teaching. Matthew chapter, five, verse, Matthew chapter 9, verse 35. And Jesus went throughout all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every affliction. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. There we go. Thank you for joining me as we read again today. I look forward to reading with you again tomorrow. I love you so much. Bye.